The Cold Card Mark IV has a plethora of advanced features and that list seems to continue growing. Today we're going to be taking a look at a feature called Seed Vault in which you can create new seed phrases, import existing seed phrases, or back up things like your tap signer to your own cold card and categorize and label these seed phrases for easy access in your seed vault. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This is your daily session. Bitcoin. Before we dive in, quick shout out to sponsors of the show, hodlhodl.com. If you're looking to buy Bitcoin and you have a few priorities in mind, like peer-to-peer -peer trading, instant self-custody, and no KYC, this is the place to go. You can sign up with nothing more than an email address. Once you're there, you simply choose a currency, payment method, and amount, and you can start viewing offers and stacking non-KYC sats immediately. You also have the option to check out their peer-to-peer -peer lending platform in which nothing is ever rehypothecated. Links are down below to check them out. Now, of course, in this video, we're going to be talking CoinKite and Cold Card and Tap Signer. Uh, but of course, when you have some non KYC sats or otherwise, you're going to want to secure them with some of the best hardware on the market. It's no secret that I think the Cold Card Mark IV is bar none the best thing that you can do this with. Of course, I have all their other goodies over at CoinKite, including the Tap Signer, SAS cards, block clocks, and I have pre ordered the hell out of the cold card Q1, which is coming soon. So if you want to pre-order that or pick up anything else I mentioned in this video, head over to coinkite.com. You can use code BTC sessions for 5% off everything in the store. Now, backups are also very important. You want your seed phrases protected from the elements, fire, water, corrosion, all of that. And the seed ore is probably the one of the most beautifully designed and robust steel backup solutions I've seen. Um, I love the disc and capsule design. Uh, not only is it super secure, but it is also resilient in a way where if you need to swap out your seed, you can simply switch out the discs inside. You don't have to replace the entire thing. You can also use discs to add additional information like what wallet you're dealing with on its own individual disc in there. Anyways, you can check out Cedor at the links down below. I've got different links depending on where you're shipping to to get you the best rates. Up next, we've got nunchuck.io, and they have you covered with your assisted multi-sig needs. What is this? This is basically an assisted multi-sig setup that you can manage entirely from your mobile device. It walks you through every step of the way. You can use it with items like the tap signer, the cold card, and a whole bunch of other hardware options. Once you are all set up, Nunchuck holds one key and you hold the rest in your multi-sig quorum, keeping your SATs secure. It also has baked in security and inheritance planning so that your, uh, your SATs get to your next of kin should anything happen to you. And finally, the whole thing is no KYC, meaning you don't have to give up your private information to set this up and have it work for you. Check them out, nunchuck.io. And finally, shout out to Start9, your sovereign computing solution. I love these guys and everything that they're doing. Uh, they put together plug and play solutions to run your entire Bitcoin stack and your personal data. So what can you run? You can run things like Bitcoin Core, your Lightning Node, mempool.space, join market, also files, passwords, photos, even AI stuff and Nostra clients and relays. They have a whole bunch of different devices to choose from, from entry level all the way up to what I'm running, which is the Start9 Server Pure, which they've just discounted by a couple hundred bucks. And you can use my code BTC Sessions with a little plus sign at the end to get a further 18% off. Head over to start9.com if you're curious. And with that, let's dive into our tutorial today. So let's start with some prerequisites. What are you going to need to know in order to successfully navigate this tutorial? Well, number one, I think you should be familiar with uh, your cold card already. Um, it should be fully set up with a pin and perhaps already with a seed phrase uh, natively on the device. Um, and that's that applies to being able to do just about everything in this video is having a cold card that's already initialized with its own pin and seed phrase. Um, I do have a full cold card tutorial. I will link that in the show notes down below. 
Uh, it is a lengthy one. It goes through a ton of other advanced features, but if you just get through the basics of setting it up in regular use, then you should be pretty much covered with everything else we're going to do here today. You're also going to want to make sure that you're updated to the latest firmware. In this case, at the time of recording this video, uh, we are uh, on firmware version 5.0.7. So anything to there and beyond, you should see all the same menus and everything that I'm seeing, unless they've added additional updates after this video in which case it shouldn't be too much different. You just might see a few additional options. Um, and if you're unsure how to update your cold card to the latest firmware, then of course you can check out that, again, cold card tutorial that I will have linked in the show notes here. Uh, other than that, um, familiarity with Sparrow Wallet is also an asset. I'll link that down below as well, although that's included in the cold card tutorial, um, as that's what we're going to be using as our interface to... Uh, get our wallets visible on screen and see balances and all of that. Nonetheless, let's dive in. We're going to get your cold card set up, assuming you're on the latest firmware, and see how to turn on the Seed Vault function and start using it. And just a side note here that if you want further documentation on how to use Seed Vault and temporary seeds like we're going to be doing today, uh, you can head to coldcard.com slash docs slash temporary dash seeds, and I'll link that in the show notes as well. When you have your cold card set up, uh, it will not by default have the seed vault enabled, but it does enable something called temporary seeds, formerly known as ephemeral seeds. And this allows you to create a seed phrase to utilize for the current session when you're already logged in to your cold card, but then as soon as you unplug it and power it down, that seed is gone and wiped because it is stored on the RAM and not on the secure element. And so there are security trade-offs in utilizing um, the seed vault, and I will discuss those at the end of the video. So stay tuned for those because it's important to understand exactly what you're doing here. Uh, I am going to quickly show you where the temporary seeds section is uh, under advanced slash tools. And if you scroll down in the latest update, you can see there's an option called temporary seed. And it says warning a temporary seed is completely separate from the master seed typically held in the device RAM and not persisted between reboots in the secure element. Enable the seed vault feature to store these secrets longer term. Okay, and it says press four to prove you read the end of this message and accept all the consequences. So I'll hit four and then it gives me the option to generate words, import words, import a private key or back up a tap signer temporarily. Again, all of these options are temporary when the seed vault is not enabled. So please keep that in mind. We are going to turn on the seed vault so that these options are now, for the time being, permanent. So I'm going to back out here. We'll recenter ourselves on the main screen. So you're on your main screen. You're going to go all the way down to advanced slash tools or one shy of the bottom option. Then you're going to go all the way down in this menu until you see danger zone. And that is right at the very bottom. And then you're going to go down to the option that says seed vault. You're going to check mark that. And then it says, do you want to enable the seed vault? It adds a prompt to store temporary seeds into seed vault where they can easily be reused later. Warning seed vault is encrypted by your seed, but not held directly inside the secure element. Backups are required after any change to the vault recommended for experiments for temporary use. So we'll hit check mark there and we're going to go down and hit enable. So the seed vault is now enabled and now from our main screen where it says ready to sign, you can now see an additional option that says seed vault, which we can click into. It says that we don't have any saved seeds currently, but we can create a temporary seed. And if we click into that, it will give us the options to generate words, import words, import a private key or do a tap signer backup. Once we do have stuff in the seed vault, we will no longer see the option for temporary seed there and we'll have to go and find it back in 
advanced slash tools. And again, look for the temporary seed option to create new ones. Or there's a variety of other ways to get there to create temporary seeds to store in the seed vault. And we're going to cover them all. So let's get ourselves started and create our first temporary seed. So once again, let's go and we're going to bypass seed vault here. We're going to go down to advanced slash tools since this will be the typical way that you create a temporary seed. We're then going to look for the menu item called temporary seed. We're going to click on that. And then we're going to say generate words. We're going to choose the length of our seed phrase. For this example, I'm just going to use 12 words. This then generates a 12 word seed phrase for me. And we can see them here uh, and we can scroll through through. You would write these down on paper or some physical form. And then it says, please check and double check your notes. Uh, press four to add some dice rolls. So you can always do the old coin kite dice roll thing into the mix. We won't for this example. Press six to skip the word quiz. Uh, or press one to view as a QR code. Uh, so for this example, normally uh, when you set up a new seed, uh, your cold card will go through the quiz of what is word number three? And it'll give you three options. What is word number six? And it'll give you three options to make sure that you actually have recorded the seed. It gives you the option to skip that if this is meant for temporary measures, like you're just utilizing it for one thing at this moment and you won't need this seed phrase again. Um, you can also view it as a QR code, which is scannable to import into, say, something like Blue Wallet or, or a, a variety of other options. Uh, for this, I'm going to hit six and I'm going to skip the word quiz for now. Um, and it says, are you sure? Skipping the quiz means you might have recorded the seed wrong and will be crying later. Love it. Uh, I'm going to say yes. OK, applying. Okay, so it says press one to store temporary seed into seed vault. So this is the option that you get that you wouldn't get if you hadn't turned on the seed vault. Uh, this way you can easily switch to this secret and use its temporary seed in the future. Press okay to continue without saving. So I'm gonna press one because I wanna save this into the seed vault for the example. All right, so it says, hey, we've saved this into the seed vault. And that's all the information I need. Check mark. And there we go. It says new temporary master key is in effect now. And this is known as the master fingerprint of the particular key or the seed phrase that we just generated. And so this seed phrase that we just came up with is what the cold card effectively what wallet you're using on the cold card right now. You're not using your normal seed. You're using the new one you just generated. So I'm going to hit check mark again. And it boots me back to the main screen, but at the very top, it shows me the uh, master fingerprint of the seed that I'm currently using so that you recognize that you're not on your main seed. And so if I check mark into this, it's actually just a clone of the ready to sign. Uh, same thing here. If I go to ready to sign, I don't have any transactions ready to sign on an SD card or anything like that. Um, so it just says, hey, we're ready to sign and start spending transactions or sending transactions. So basically right now I'm sitting on this seed and I will be able to utilize that seed as such until I go all the way down and there's an additional menu option that says restore master. And this gets me back to my main master seed that normally governs this cold card. So I'm gonna do that right now just so we can see the difference. So restore the main wallet and its settings. I'm gonna say yes. And boom, there we are back on our regular cold card seed that has been on this device since it was set up. So at this point, now we've created a temporary seed, but then we've saved, saved it to the seed vault. So that means when we go to the seed vault, we have a seed there, and that is the master fingerprint of that particular seed. If I click on that seed, it gives me the option to use this seed. I can also rename it or I can delete it. 
Uh, so I'm going to go first, let's rename it. So we're just going to, uh, if, and you're going to have it all filled in with the master fingerprint, but if you want to go back and delete what's there, you can hit the X and it will go back, back, back until the very first digit. Don't hit X on the first digit. You're going to change that digit. Cause if you hit X, it will just take you back out and it'll restore the entire <laughs> it'll restore the entire master fingerprint there and you have to do it again okay so uh i think i hit one to change to letters and uh we'll just call this one test so i'll just up and down we'll fill that in and once i have my word spelled out i just hit the check mark down on the bottom right and it now saves that seed as test so if i back out to where we enter the seed vault first we can see okay uh, number one seed is test in our seed vault. So again, I can click into that. And if I hit use this seed, it will start using it. Uh, if I delete the seed, obviously it will then prompt me to make sure I want to do such. But nonetheless, let's actually go back into this seed. It says applying. It says new temporary master key is in, uh, uh, in effect now. We can hit check mark. And again, it will show the master fingerprint of the wallet that you're using. It won't show the name of the one that you're using. So if you need to double check that, you can go back into your seed vault. But nonetheless, the cold card is now governed by this seed. Now near the end, we're, we're going to um, figure out first how to use a variety of different seeds. And, and we're going to get a bit of a, a roster of different seeds in our seed vault first before we then see how to actually utilize these seeds and interact with them and transact with them, okay? Uh, so let's take a look at different ways to add seeds. And uh, before I do that, again, right now we're in our first test seed. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna hit restore master. Up next, let's take a look at how we can import a seed. So once again, um, we're going to go down to advanced slash tools, and then we're going to go down to temporary seed. And then we're going to choose import words. How many words do we want to import? Again, for this example, I'll just do 12. And then this is where you would start typing in whatever your first word is. Okay, so let's say it was A, D, D. Let's say it was address. So there's word one. And then it says, what is word two? And you do the same thing all the way through your 12 words. Once they are in there, you will have a uh, new full seed. It will say, do you want to save it to the seed vault? Do the same thing that we just did with the last one. So this is very much like the process you would do when importing a seed onto a blank cold card. Uh, exact same process here. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but you get the point. This is how you would import a 12 or 24 word seed phrase and then add it to your seed vault. I'm just going to X out of this. I no longer want to do that. The other thing you can do is import a, it, call, it says XPRV. That's a private key. Okay, so I'm going to click on that. This is where you would have a private key, an XPRV file on your SD card. As soon as it saw this private key file on your SD card, it would say, hey, is this the one you would like to import? At which point the process will be exactly the same as we've seen before. Hey, would you like to add to Seed Vault? If yes, then it will be imported and then you can label it whatever you like and use it as the native seed on this cold card temporarily. Again, I'm not gonna go through that whole process right now, but you get the point. If you got one of those files, you can import it as such. Now, there is something called Tap Signer Backup here as well. And this one is particularly cool. I love this feature. And what it has to do with is actually being able to use your cold card with the same private key that resides on your Tap Signer. So how in the hell do you do this? Well, it has to do with the way that you originally backed up your Tap Signer. And we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to jump to a phone and we're going to deal with a tap signer on it. Um, and if you are unfamiliar with the tap signer, I recommend 
that you go back and check out my tap signer video. But uh, we're going to jump forward into that. Let's see how we do our tap signer. All right, so here I am. This is Nunchuck Wallet. Again, tutorials on this will be linked down below. But I've got Nunchuck Wallet. I've got a tap signer here, and my tap signer key or or the public key is allocated to this so that I could uh, send and receive and, and do all that using the tap signer and my phone here and Nunchuck Wallet. Now, the backup process of the tap signer, and this is a bit of a refresher. If you're really unsure, then of course, go back and watch the tap signer video in the show notes. But um, the backup process for the tap signer, let's see how this goes. I'm going to click on the key in question. So my tap signer key in the top right, there's three little dots. And it, if I hit that, it gives me the option to back up my key. Okay, I'm gonna enter the pin, and again, this is a test device, so I have a really simple pin for tutorial purposes. I'm gonna hit the pin, I'm gonna hit confirm, and it says scan your tap signer. At this point, it's exporting a file, and I can send this file wherever I like to myself. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna email this file to myself so that I can uh, get it on my computer and then stick it on an SD card, okay? So I'm just gonna off screen here, I'm gonna hit my Gmail option here, I'm gonna send an email to myself. This is an encrypted version of the key to my tap signer. There's another part to this because on the back of every tap signer, there is a backup password and the password is what decrypts the file so that you can access the key. And since all of this is being done technically offline, at least the decryption part with the backup password, your key stays cold as you transfer it over to the cold card. So hopefully that makes sense to you. But nonetheless, all you're doing is you're doing this backup process. You're going to send this file to yourself and get it onto an SD card so that you can put it into the cold card. All right. So just over here on my computer to show really quickly, I've got my SD card that I have plugged into my computer and I've just downloaded the file that I emailed to myself and I've placed it onto the SD card. That is all that I need to do right now. So I can now close this out. I can eject it and I can go insert that SD card into the cold card that we are using. Okay, we are back. And so now I've inserted the SD card that has that tap signer backup file. So I'm now going to choose tap signer backup from that previous menu we were in on my cold card. It says, hey, pick the tap signer encrypted backup file. There is only one file to pick from. I'll hit the check mark and it says, hey, this is the file that we see here. Would you like that one? I'm gonna hit check mark. It says, make sure you have your tap signer handy as you will need to provide the backup password from the back of the card in the next step. Press okay to continue or X to cancel. I'm gonna hit okay. Okay, and at this point, I get to now input the backup password that is allocated on the back of the tap signer here. So I'm going to put all of that in. And, uh, and remember, on the cold card, if you want um, letters or numbers, this, this one is uh, done in hexadecimal. And so hexadecimal, uh, you have, I believe, A, B, C, D, E, F are the possible letters that you can use and then uh, zero through nine. So if you go down, it will start going through the letters. And if you go up, it'll start going through the numbers. So uh, if you're confused by the password on the back of this, just be aware that anytime you see a zero, it is a zero and not an O. Uh, so you're not freaking out if you can't find it is there's only one possibility there. So I'm gonna put in my backup password and then I'm gonna hit check mark and I'll show you what happens next. Once you've put in your backup password and beware, uh, you can make mistakes as I encountered in putting mine. Uh, so just double and triple check what you're typing in because it's a pain in the butt to put it in more than once. Uh, it will say applying briefly um, or it'll say applying for a brief period of time to be uh, concise here. And then it will say, press one to store temporary seed into seed vault. This way you can easily switch to this secret and use it as a temporary seed in the future. Press okay to continue without saving. I'm going to save it. I'm going to press one. 
and it says it's now saved to the seed vault right there. So I'm going to hit check mark again. It says new master key is in effect now. Check mark out of that. Okay, and once again, it bumps us to our main screen, but it has the master fingerprint up top. I'm going to go down to the seed vault. Let's rename this one, and I'm going to rename it to... Uh, we'll just say TS for tap signer to keep it nice and short. So we'll get rid of everything here. We'll be back in a sec once I've done that. And there we go. We've got our test seed and we also have our tap signer allocated within this cold card for easy access. And if I ever want to go back, I can go just down to restore master or from the main menu, I can do the same thing. So I'm going to go back to the master seed for now. And now we have two different wallets easily accessible from our seed vault. Now, there is another cool way that you can use the seed vault. We're going to dive into that next. Now, one of the features that I'm a huge fan of that is available on the cold card and a few other hardware options out there, is something called BIP85. And this allows you to use the main seed of your uh, cold card in this instance as a master seed and then derive up to 10,000 we'll call them child seeds from it these child seeds can be regenerated as at will um, they're all numbered from 0 to 9,999 and if you keep record of what those seeds are for you can use them for a lot of different purposes one such instance could be for all of your hot wallets that you like and so in that instance Perhaps you only use the cold card as the backup to your hot wallet. So you have a regular hot wallet sitting on your phone and you don't have to have an additional seed because if you delete it or you do anything to it, you can always go back to your cold card and say, hey, what was account number one? And it'll spit out the same seed for you. Uh, and even if you wreck your cold card, you can simply go back to the original 24 word seed or 12 word seed that you wrote down for it, restore that and then use BIP85 to record or to recover your hot wallets. Another instance of using BIP85 might be if you have family members that maybe you're not super sure will actually retain important information and they are holding Bitcoin. Well, you can be their quote unquote Uncle Jim and you can be their last line of defense by using BIP85 to generate seed phrases for them which you'll then import to their own hardware wallets and tell them to keep careful uh, watch over. But if they fail to keep their devices and their seed phrases safe, then perhaps unbeknownst to them, you can come in, swoop in as that uh, last line of defense and say, hey, I actually do have a backup as well. Here you go. Never do that again. Anyways, I digress. I got on a little bit of a, a rant there. BIP85 is super cool. I'm going to include a video on it down below, but I just want to show how you can utilize BIP85 to have easy access to those generated seed phrases directly in your seed vault. So let's go down to advanced slash tools, and we're going to go down to derive B85 for BIP85. Uh, and it lets you know what BIP85 is. I'm going to go past this for now. It says, how large of a seed phrase would you like? 12, 18, 24, a private key, whatever you want. I'm going to go for just a 12-word seed phrase in this example. And then the index number. Remember I said these are numbered from 0 to 9999. I'm just going to go with 0, the first one here, and hit check mark. And this will generate, again, a child seed that is 12 words in length. And in this case, I will not need to jot this down externally, okay? This, this, is, this is my backup right here. My backup is just knowing that it was, it was account number zero and that it was a 12 word seed phrase. That's really all I need. So down at the bottom of the seed, it lets you know a bunch of information about this, the, the uh, you know, all of the specifics about it. And at the number two, uh, and, and at the very bottom, and then it says, you have the option to save this to the micro SD card, switch to the derive secret, or view as a QR code. We're going to switch to this secret. So we are switching to account zero of our BIP85 derived seeds. So I'm going to hit two. 
It says applying. And then it says, hey, press one to store this temporary seed into your seed vault, just like every other option. So we're going to hit one and we're going to store it there. And let's say this was uh, the seed phrase for my dear old mom. And I'm just worried that mom is maybe not going to be able to keep track of her hardware and her seed phrase. And one day may come to me and ask how she can recover her wallet, despite all my warnings. Well, here it is. And this gives me easy access to it as well. So I'm just going to check mark. Everything looks all good. It does switch to this temporary seed as, as we had it set up. Okay. So this, it gives me the master fingerprint. I can check mark through. I'm now in that wallet. Okay. I can go to my seed vault and I can rename this one mom. And now that I've saved that, we can see it here in my seed vault. And if mom ever has some issues, of course, I can. I don't have to do this. I can just go back into Bit85 and say, oh, mom's seed was, was account zero. But if I want to, I can have it in the seed vault. I can jump on, put in my pin and then go, yo, seed vault, let's go to mom's account and, uh, and get that information. And let's just jump back to our master seed again. Now this, <laughs> I know you, there's been so many different instances of how to use the seed vault, but there's actually another cool one and it has to do with trick pins. And this is a, a subject that I covered in the original cold card tutorial that is down below. So if you're curious about it, go ahead and see all the different uses, but trick pins are really cool. And one of the options that they give you when you're setting up a trick pin, which is a pin other than the main pin for your device which will cause the cold card to execute a certain action other than logging in normally. And so one of the things you can do with a trick pin is you can have a trick pin lead to a decoy wallet. And this dec decoy wallet may be funded with a decoy amount of funds so that if somebody were to break into your house and say, show me the pin to your device and you show them the pin and then they leave and Okay, they go to use the cold card at home and extract funds. Well, they've just extracted funds from your decoy wallet and not the real one. You could even, again, if they're forcing you to get on a computer and show you, well, you can do the same thing. You can load up the decoy wallet. Hey, here's what I've got on this. There you go. Unbeknownst to them. Well, there was an actual different wallet. Well, you can actually, assuming that you may want to utilize the decoy wallet and and put some funds in there from time to time or, or play around to make it look as if there's been activity, you can add your decoy wallet with the trick pin uh, to your seed vault so that you don't have to log into the decoy wallet with your trick pin every single time. You can just use your regular pin and then go to seed vault and say, hey, let's go to the decoy. So how do we do that? Well, you got to set up a trick pin in the first place. So we're going to go to settings. And we're going to go to login settings, the top option. And then we're going to go to trick pins. Okay. So right now there is a trick pin already allocated to this one, which just makes it look blank. And so that's, that's cool. That's a, a fun thing to do, but we're going to add a new trick. Okay. So we'll hit add new trick. And what do we want our pin to be for this example? I'm just going to say one, 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 one. It gives us our two anti phishing words here, a check mark, and then again, the rest one, 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 check mark. Now it says, What you want to this pin to do? We're going to go and it's going to take us to a duress wallet. So I'm going to click that. It goes directly to a specific duress wallet, no side effects, check mark. Okay, so this is going to go to BIP85 uh, wallet number one, number two, or number three. Okay. So you get to choose which one is going to be your duress wallet. And you want to make sure that this doesn't conflict with another BIP85 wallet that you're currently using. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we'll say that it goes to BIP85 uh, wallet number three for this example. Okay. This pin will lead to a functional duress wallet using seed words produced by the standard BIP85 process. Index number is, ah, and it's actually not number one, two, or three. Uh, it is 1001, 1002, or 1003, in this case, 1003. 
Uh, same number of seed words as your true seed. Okay, fantastic. I'm going to hit check mark. Okay, it now says, hey, this is your duress wallet. It will use this path. It has 24 words. Okay, is that all right? I'm going to hit okay. Okay, now I can go to that trick pin and I can say activate wallet. It says this will temporarily load the uh, seed secrets associated with this trick pin. Okay, sure. Check mark. Applying. And here we get our message. Press 1 to store temporary seed into the seed vault. I'm going to choose that. Okay, save to seed vault. Check mark. All right, this is now active. And now we can go to our seed vault and give it a quick label so we know what it is. All right, so I've now named it my decoy wallet, and here it is in my seed vault, ready to be used if I ever need to fund it or, or put in some activity so it looks like it is regularly used. It is available and ready to go. So we've now seen a whole bunch of different ways to set up, import, create, um, and back up various forms of seed phrases into your seed vault. But how the hell do you actually interact with them? Well, that's actually quite easy and it is very much the same as what you would do with a regular uh, cold card account that you were importing to another wallet. And this is effectively the exact same process that you would experience that I covered in my cold card tutorial. The only difference is we got to make sure we're using the right account. So I've logged out of all of my seed vault options. I'm on the master seed right now. So what you're going to want to do first is you want to go down to your seed vault and choose the account you actually want to interact with. So for this one, I'm going to use my tap signer backup. And the reason I want to use this is I just want to show that you can actually use your cold card as a secondary source to govern your, your tap signer. So that's my tap signer account. I'm going to hit check mark. I'm going to say use this seed. Perfect. So this is now in effect. So I'm on what is effectively my tap signer, but I'm using my cold card. Now, what I want to do is I want to go down to advanced slash tools. I'm going to choose export wallet and I want a file that is compatible with Sparrow. So I'm going to choose that one. This says this is going to save a file on to your micro SD card and you can use it with Sparrow wallet. Okay, great. I'm going to hit check mark generating and it saved a file called Sparrow export.json. Fantastic. Back to the main screen. I'll just hit X until I see my master fingerprint. Okay, fantastic. Now I'm going to take out my SD card. I'm going to plunk this into my computer and I'm going to load up my tap signer account into Sparrow wallet. So here I am on my desktop. I've got my SD card plugged in to my computer. I can see there is the uh, Sparrow export.json. That's the one that I want. Uh, what I'm going to do is on Sparrow, I'm going to go file. I'm going to say new wallet. We'll call this, uh, call it TS um, seed vault backup. Okay, cool. We're going to hit create wallet. Uh, and then how are we importing this? This is actually going to be an air gapped hardware wallet because I'm using the air gapped method with my cold card, not with my tab signer. So I'm going to choose that. And it says, hey, what kind of file is this? It's actually a cold card file. So I'm going to hit import file. I'm going to go to my SD card. I'm looking for the JSON file. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hit open. It loads in all of the uh, information there. You can also give it a label if you want. Um, I'll just leave this as, as is. I'm just going to hit apply. I'm not going to use a password for this one right now. Okay, so once this finishes loading in a moment, I should see, um, and this is a, a, a new test tap signer, so there should be a, a, just two transactions in the transaction history. And there they are. Fantastic. So my tap signer here is now, I suppose, my cold card. They are 
effectively one and the same because the same keys reside on both in different forms. And so if I wanted to receive to what is technically my tap signer, I just hit receive and there's my QR code. There's my address that I can copy and send to people. If I want to send and I don't want to actually whip out my tap signer and uh, do it on my phone or I don't have an NFC scanner for my computer, um, which you can do, by the way, uh, on, on your computer. Nonetheless, I could just go to my send screen. I could paste in an address, give it a label, send an amount. And then in the sending process, exactly like my original cold card tutorial, you would save the transaction information to your SD card. You'd pull it out and put it into your cold card. You would click ready to sign approve the transaction, and then bring it back, load it up, and broadcast it off, just like a regular cold card air-gapped transaction would happen. I should also say that the same would apply if you're not using the air gap method and you're just plugging in your cold card to your computer. Same lesson applies. You can just plug in the cold card, approve it, and that seed, when it's being used on the cold card, it becomes your tap signer right? It is the same keys. It can approve transactions in the same way that you would with a tap signer. So um, yeah, you've basically got access to everything you need here in Sparrow Wallet with your cold card, and it becomes a secondary tap signer for all intents and purposes. Oh, and of course, I'm focusing on the tap signer aspect of this, but if you want to interact with any of your other seed vault seeds that you have there, you would do the exact same thing. You would start from your master. You would log in to whatever seed you want to use in your seed vault, and then you would do the same export process and import it here to Sparrow and use it as an air gapped or non air gapped method uh, to sign with your cold card, just like normal. Now, what if you no longer want to use Seed Vault and you don't even want the option here on your device? How do you go about doing that? Well, first off, you've got to go into the Seed Vault and you've got to remove all of the accounts that you have there. And again, you do that by choosing the account, going down to delete, and then it says, hey, this is going to remove it from the settings. Press OK to continue. Uh, press 1 to only remove from Seed Vault and keep an encrypted settings for later use. I'm going to hit check mark so it will fully remove that seed. I'm going to do that for the rest of the accounts as well. Once they are all gone, you will see again that there's no seeds saved yet and it gives you the option to do temporary seeds. We're going to X back out of that, recentering ourselves on the main screen. We're going to go all the way down to advanced slash tools. Then we're going to go all the way down to danger zone. Once again, we're looking for seed vault. Right now we can see there's a check mark on it, but if I select it, we're gonna change it to default off. And now back on our main screen, we no longer have the seed vault option and it won't ask us if we want to save seeds into it. We're now back to normal. All right, so let's dive into a little bit of the security as well as some of the backup tips that I would give you when considering using the Seed Vault. So first of all, security-wise, what are the trade-offs here? Well, the seed information itself is not stored specifically on the secure elements on the cold card. However, uh, your seeds that are in the seed vault, while stored in the RAM on the cold card, they are encrypted and they're encrypted by your master key, which does reside on the secure element. So if you're trying to tinfoil hat it a little bit and say, what are my attack vectors? Um, there's my understanding is there's a potential that if somebody got a hold of your device, they may be able to extract the encrypted version of the keys that reside in the seed vault. However, without the decryption key, which is the master seed that resides on the secure element that cannot be dis um, extracted from the device, 
they effectively have nothing. So I suppose it would then be up to you how you perceive that risk. Um, and I guess I don't need to go too much further than that. Um, uh, for me, I don't think I'm super worried in that instance if I'm not using the stuff in the seed vault for life savings um, and it's, you know, hot wallets and decoy wallets and things like that. Um, if there's a meaningful amount of funds on those, then I'm, I may uh, prefer not to use the seed vault for that. Now, let's talk about backups and tips that you should know when using the seed vault. I would say more or less if you've used the seed vault in a way where there's a redundant copy of the seed that is in the seed vault. And what I mean by that is maybe in the seed vault, you have uh, a seed that was created by BIP85. And that BIP85 seed phrase is uh, a hot wallet that you're using on your phone. In that instance, you've got that seed sitting in a hot wallet on your phone. So there's one copy. You've also got that seed sitting as a backup in your seed vault on your cold card. And so that in and of itself is a redundant copy. So you've got, you know, if something goes wrong with one or the other, you still have access to that seed. On top of that, because you've used BIP85, the actual master seed of the cold card, you can always use that if something goes wrong with the cold card in your hot wallet, you can go back to the original master seed and say BIP85 account number four and it'll spit out that child seed there as well so you've got many methods of recovery in that instance um the same would apply to a decoy wallet uh as we saw it is effectively a bip 85 generated so you you have many different um avenues of recovery what you don't want to do is the first instance where we generated a temporary seed. It's important to note that that is not in any way, and it says it as you're doing it, it's not in any way related to your original master seed. It is independently generated and is living only in the seed vault. If you then go and use that as a hot wallet, or whatever, then yes, again, there's a redundant copy. If it gets wiped from the seed vault, at least you still have the hot wallet sitting on your phone or whatever you're doing. But keep in mind, if it only resides on the cold card and you're using it as another air gap wallet and you don't, you haven't written down that seed phrase anywhere else and it's just, it, it's only there once. And so if your seed vault gets wiped, there's no way to recover that if there's no redundant copy. So this specifically applies to generating new words from the seed vault. Okay, so keep that in mind. I guess the same would apply if you've generated a seed phrase somewhere else and you only have one copy of it and you import it and it's only sitting in the seed vault, then that for me also would be a red flag because it's only in one place. The, the key point here is have redundancy, have multiple places to be able to recover the seed and don't rely exclusively on the seed vault to be your one and only copy of a seed phrase. So just some final thoughts here. Um, I, I had uh, seen some rumblings about seed vault and and maybe kind of dragged my heels a little bit on doing a video on it. But wow, I'm, am I ever glad that I did? Because what a cool tool. Um, in particular, for me, I'm, I'm kind of excited about the idea of being able to back up my tap signers in a way that is desktop friendly. And uh, again, gives me some redundancy around having access to those files. Um, yeah, I, that's super useful for me because I do use tap signers when I'm on the go and everything. Uh, and also just easy access to some of your BIP85 uh, wallets if you use those regularly. What a great way to be able to just quickly flip into them. Um, again, as I said in the, in the previous segment here, uh, I don't know that I would have stuff with a, a meaningful amount of funds sitting in my seed vault, but for 
hot wallets and tap signers and things that are kind of on the go and not life savings amounts of Bitcoin. What a fantastic use case. And it just kind of streamlines being able to get in, access and utilize those those uh, child seeds in a way that is super convenient. So, um, yeah, <laughs> there's just always a treasure trove of new cool things to try out with my cold card. I love it. Anyways, guys, uh, let me know what you think about Seed Vault and how you might utilize it. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please do hit like, subscribe, share. Those things really help a ton. That little like button is just down below. So make sure you give that a smack. Subscribe if you're not already and share this to anybody that you think may find it useful. If you want to help the show in another way, of course, you can pick up any CoinKite stuff at CoinKite.com. Use code BTC Sessions to do so. You can also hit up the previously mentioned sponsors, Hoddle Hoddle, Seedort, Nunchuck, and Start9. And if you really liked what you saw and you need some additional help with anything Bitcoin related, if you need some extra hand holding, head over to my website, btcsessions.ca, and there you can book me for one on ones that can help you with anything that you need. With that, I am out. Have yourselves a wonderful day or evening. I'll see you guys next time for your daily session. Bitcoin.